All right. Well, thank you so much for having me. Uh, first thing I want to do here is I need to do a little bit of an exercise because as I showed up, um, I came all the way from New Orleans in, in the States, and I really, I'm ridiculously jet lagged. <laughs> I'm having so much trouble. I shot bolt right, upright, three o'clock in the morning last night, and I was like, I have to add slides, and it didn't make any sense. I don't know what I was dreaming about, but uh, we have this, I have this exercise I like to do, and that's what I'm saying is like uh, the fun part of it. So what I'd like you to do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and count to three, and I'd like everybody just to really like laugh as loud as you can and have that turn into like uproarious applause, and I'll get everybody rolling. Ready? One, two, three. Woo hoo! Yeah! Oh yeah, that feels good. If you do that for the rest of the speakers, everybody's gonna have the best day of their lives. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of stock photography in my speech. Uh, another thing is you're saying, hey, Gant, who is he? What the hell is he looking at in all his photos? Uh, screw you, I'm looking at my unicorn that I like to ride on. It makes a lot of sense for me. Additionally, those of you who are familiar with JavaScript uh, can read this and very clearly see that in JavaScript, this renders to my name. So for you JavaScript developers out there, that's for you. But just to kind of go through here, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, React Native, but I need to get a spectrum of the room. How many of you are, are React Native developers? Raise your hand. And how many of you have just started React Native? You can see it's the, it's the scared people. Uh, it's the people wondering what the hell they're doing here. And how many of you have come here from a, a, a web perspective, just joining mobile for the first time? Yeah, there's a lot of us. And the story of mobile development has changed for all of us. I mean, if you took a look back in the, there's an app for that day, there used to be what people thought I did when I did mobile development. And no lie, that is what we did. That's, that's basically mobile development day two. There's Becky, she's on her way to Whole Foods. Uh, <clears throat> And it's a, it's a lot of fun. Now, one of the things that I highly recommend is that you Google people laughing and holding money. It is worth it. <laughs> but uh, web developers used to look at mobile development and be like, eh, no. No, thank you. It's very complicated. It's a very difficult thing. And then when I was doing mobile development, most of the time, all I was doing is just watching the damn thing compile. I wrote, I was able to read books upon books upon it while I was just waiting for it. And the experience sucked. So additionally, it was back when iOS was just popular and Android got popular. So there's the average salary for an iOS developer, Android uh, developer salary. And so it was like, okay, what do you want, client? I want both. Okay, well then that's the salary that I expect. Makes sense to me. But whenever you try to do this, something else kind of happened. Trying to absolutely, completely, deeply understand both iOS and Android, plus now with React Native going on so many different platforms, uh, you would just end up on Stack Overflow, and that's what they were paying you to do. And so I think that there's this promised land that's been waiting for it for a long time, and, and web developers know about it, right? What we want to do is stop sitting there. We want to have this amazing experience where we're able to do exactly like we can do in web development, but we want to be able to do it for mobile. And a lot of platforms have tried to do this. There's PhoneGap, there's uh, lots of other setup, and, and one of the ones that we really liked down here well, it was RubyMotion. So we, we gave RubyMotion a go. And so I work with a bunch of dorky, weird, kind of goofy people, and we have a lot of fun. We built some open source libraries, because that's where people love to do things. And there was a hackathon, and I said, you know what? A few of us, let's go ahead and put ourselves to the test. Let's see what we can do. And when we're doing this sort of hybrid level development, but it's sort of based on native, and it worked on an LLVM, we're like, how fast are we? And it got a little dangerous, because like, this might be the moment where we find out we suck. <laughs> I don't really know what we can do here. And we entered as many times as we could into that hackathon. It was 24 hours. You had to just make something silly and funny and interesting. And we walked away with first, second, and fourth place. And it was amazing. Most people couldn't even get one entry in. And this felt amazing. This is what mobile development was supposed to be, right? 
But Ruby Motion, ultimately, how could it improve? It never actually supported Android properly. And I think today it's still working strongly for it, but we had to shift. We had to think about it differently. So that's when we jumped onto, as a team, with React Native. And there's ACM articles talking about how we're applying functional concepts. There's all these great uh, intellectuals. There's people from Facebook. So it's a fantastic opportunity for us as we look at it. So I did a blog post, and I'm sitting there editing, and I'm watching iOS and Android update as I'm saving it. And I just could not believe the speed that we had. It's like, this is fantastic. Well, let me start building something a little more complex. This is how we used to build a map screen. We'd type in a command, it would generate a map screen, and we'd be off and rolling. So I was like, okay, how do we do this now? All right, so, okay, there's install instructions. Let me click on that. Okay, let me just scroll here. iOS, Android, no, 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 no! My speed was gone. It killed me. It used to be so clear, so easy. And it has to be, honestly, a better way. I love that GIF. I love that one. It's got to be a better way to kind of get back to it. And that's essentially what we're all kind of getting to. React Native's so young, everybody can help in this endeavor. Why is there a problem? Well, JavaScript's been around for a while. There's a lot of opinions. Just in this room, there are tons of opinions. When we talk, 90% of the time, we're talking about, well, I believe in this technology, but this one's coming up. Is that one going to be different? Is this one going to be better? And as the newcomers who raise their hands, how do you deal with that? How do you come to this technology and say, uh, I made a decision, right? And somebody's going to look at you and say, why did you choose that? So what we did is we decided, let's get some best practices, let's get some plugins, let's get some documentation, and let's test it. This is what we use to deliver apps. And then, so that's when we made Ignite. If you know about Ignite, it's got a lot of followers, it's set up pretty well, but it's a starter, it's a jump start. It's a way to say, hey, here you go. You're safe here, not in hello world, but in some ideas that kind of go a little bit further. And then we use this when we deliver apps. So we're constantly delivering as a company on Android, iOS, and yeah, <laughs> even Windows. And so we're sitting there trying to figure out what's the best practice, and we want to invite you to work with us on that. We want everybody to say, hey, this is what I think is a great idea, this is what I think isn't a great idea, and I want to discuss that with each of you. But I know you want to see it first. You kind of want to understand what's going on. So here's an app that my friend built a while ago. It's called uh, Textables. It's a really stupid app, and I hate him for it because he's made so much money on it. It's a bunch of silly ASCII art, and what happens is when you click it, you can save it, and then send it to someone else. It's my buddy Mark, he wrote it. And this app right here that I'm about to show you has over 26,000 downloads. And he sells it for a dollar. <laughs> so you see these silly faces, you choose one, and then when you click it, I really did choose one for a long time, didn't I? <laughs> I needed to make this demo perfect. Ah, so you copy it, and then you go to some other conversation where you want to seem really intelligent and fun and smart, and then you paste it in there, and then you send it to them. And they're like, wow, that guy knows how to do ASCII art. So I want to build that with you right now, with Ignite. And so yes, that means live coding. So let's do this. Sound good? Yeah? All right. So to start off with Ignite, you would say Ignite New and say uh, Textables would be like the name of that. And what this does is this kicks off the generation process and it starts to ask you some questions. And you can see it's doing React Native uh, 47.2. I don't know if we, if Mike, did you release 48? Yeah. Oh, okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna wait for 48.1. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, this takes a little bit of time depending on the internet, so actually what I have here is uh, one that's already kind of just like I just finished the Ignite process. I'll show you that one uh, later as well. But what we have here is if you take a look at this, this is the screen that we kind of give you coming up first. It's just saying like, hey, uh, congratulations, this better not be your app. 
Uh, you probably want to make some adjustments to it. And then we have some helpful screens. We're planning on moving towards things. Like, this is science. Like, one of the things that we have here is plug-in examples. Uh, honestly, the way we should be doing that is storybook. So now there's an effort to go ahead and say, forget the way we were doing it. Let's move storybook inside there. And so what we're going to do here is this is where it starts you off and drops you into the app. I'm going to build with this just real quick where we're going to go from here. So we have textables. And what we need now is a list view with a whole bunch of fun faces on it. Knight generate, or G, a list view. And we call this the textables screen. OK, so this is going to ask me, do you want to use the new flat list, or do you want to go ahead and use the classic list view? Uh, some of us still don't know what the differences are. Some of us do. And what's funny is there's weird differences between flat list and section list that you might not really be able to keep on the top of your head. Well, we don't have to worry about that. So we want a flat list. Uh, we definitely want it as a grid. And we're just going to do one giant section for that right there. OK? And then for code-wise, the screen that we just generated, you can see it created it for us there. Let's just go to app navigation. So this is using uh, React navigation. And we're going to set our default screen to the textable screen. So we can see exactly what comes out of this right away. So if I reload over here, there we go. So we generated a screen that sort of kind of looks like the app already. You don't have to worry about it too much. And so now I'm going to go ahead and get the faces uh, that he has there. So I'm going to, that's a really long URL. I'm going to move it. I have a backup here for textables. Uh, copy. Demo done, fixtures. All right, to dot slash app fixtures. OK, so I just grabbed the data from there. Like I said, it, uh, his app is open source, so I actually have access to all that app, uh, setup already. Now I'm just going to point that list view that I created, which is called textable screen at the data. So it comes in with this uh, first, fourth, fifth, just like some friendly data here. And instead, all right. So if I reload this, it probably is looking for different stuff. So this should be empty. Yeah, because what he's looking for is going to be right here. Item is going to be name and art. Name and art. So let's take a look at what we have now. Uh, let's see. Let's have it recompile just to be sure it's getting it. Ha, <laughs> okay. That's always fun. I didn't do the sacrifice to the live demo gods, so I could be punished right now for this. Um, So the data that's there should be grabbing from here. Oh, I know what it is. I'm not grabbing the full data here. I need to grab the correct pot here. This is going to be, uh, yeah. Good data structure, Mark. Thanks. 
Aha! All right, so now we're getting really close to it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, live debugging, right? What, what better way to go ahead and do this? Now, it's got all this kind of noise. We're going to ignore that part for the sake of time, but we obviously put in header and section separators and fun things like that for you. Uh, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to put a text box at the bottom, so that way we can kind of see exactly what's happening, uh, and we can use that for identifying anything that we want to type in here. So I'll say um, text input. Style equal, and let's do some inline styles if we really want to be evil during a presentation, right? Okay. They'll need to do some imports here at the top. So we brought in what, text input? I'll also be bringing in touchable opacity. And I'll also be bringing in a clipboard, All right? So we take a look here. Oh good, unexpected token. Yeah? Thank you. Thank you very much. See? This is bringing the community together already. <laughs> right. It's funny because you can always write these things in a second instead of in front of everybody. OK, cool. So. Here we are. We set. Uh, there's a text box at the bottom. Can you all see that? Let's move this over here, so I can type in here, and this is where we can kind of see our stuff happening. And the last thing I need to do is I need to wrap the uh, list view, right? In uh, in a moment, uh, typing it. So I'm going to switch this out from a view to a touchable opacity, right? And then I'm going to add uh, the ability to copy this stuff to the clipboard. Let's do that. OK, so when I click on one, it should show me, uh, it should copy that to the clipboard. So go here. Let's say I go down to these guys saying cheers. If I click there. Paste. Aha! There we go. 99 cents on the App Store right there. No problem. Uh, I have his colors. I can obviously set up all the different colors as well. But uh, I'll kind of show you a little bit of a demo of that. But the, here's the most interesting uh, part about this, right? It's very easy. It generated. It, it didn't have to worry about too much of the concept of, of list views. And, and I have some code that's friendly here. If you take a look at the list, uh, obviously, I wouldn't want to read it in front of all of you. But you have steps. Step one, step two, work through here. And this is sort of like some templating stuff. Uh, if you have a way to improve this, it shouldn't be every company has their own kind of setup, uh, you know, that you have to worry about, you should start off here. And if you have some improvement, please give it back. And additionally, if you don't like the way I did this, here's the beauty of Ignite. You don't have to keep it. Anytime that you don't like a template that we have, you can either fork it, you can open your own plugin, or you can spork it, which is a really weird command to type out. But if you type out uh, Ignite Spork, it'll give you a list of all the templates that are in any of the generators at all. And then you can modify that, and it'll be modified for that particular project. So if one project has something specifically weird about it, then all future generations inside that project will have that updated code that comes through it. And what we do is we tie this in with Reactatron. And I don't know if you've ever had a chance to see Reactatron a bit. But Reactatron is amazing because it gives you this ability to sort of investigate in your app without actually having debug mode turned on. So you see I'm not debugging JS remotely. But over here on the side, I am able to see actions, sagas, dispatches, 
API responses. And by default, we have it wired into all these things. So uh, it's been very difficult usually to kind of see exactly what is this mobile app doing. And if you want to, of course, turn debugging uh, on and then get in there and start placing breakpoints. But if you just want to start maintaining, a, looking at a specific piece of state, getting updates when that subscription's there, or like taking a snapshot of saying like exactly what that state should be, and then being able to teleport around in time from different snapshots, that's all tooling that's built in when you create your default React Native project. So another cool thing that kind of happens with this, and it's just, just to say, we always test it all on Android as well, so not only did we build the 99 cent app store app, although with a lot of fumbling, but during a, a presentation live quite easily, we can now go out there on something that Mark never was able to do. He never released this for Android. And we just accidentally built it for Android as well. So I think I'm going to go ahead and sell that one, show him what was boss. Let's see. Please run. Survey says, there you go. Hey. Yeah. There, easy enough. So let's get back to the presentation portion of this. Looks good to me. We've, we've got a good setup. We, we kind of start with this in quite a few regards. Uh, what is it with the Ignite ecosystem? We don't want to limit you. Nobody should be limited. Each project should have its own customizations. And then here's a really cool aspect. Um, if you don't like our boilerplate, don't start with our boilerplate. Uh, the plugin system works quite easily with anything else that you have. And your coffee sponsor today, by the way, happens to have their own boilerplate built off of Ignite. And so you could actually get in here and start working directly with native base. And it uses Ignite to generate that. But by no means does it have any of the decisions that you know, we have specifically placed in there, which is very nice. Uh, so we have a community where we have over 1,200 people. Uh, you can ask questions. We'll even answer basic React Native questions. We're fun. Uh, we blog constantly on shift.infinite.red. Uh, additionally, while I'm at the conference, I, I really want, if you want a better demo than that, I'm happy to show you in person. That'd be fun as well. And I have some videos where I kind of do some of these things. Uh, you might have seen some of them in the past, but they're kind of fun. And uh, they were done before Flatlist was released. So um, we had done an app for Chain React. Uh, so that conference app was written completely in Ignite as well. And so if you want a fully uh, fledged app. But one of the things that I really want to ask is that if you build something, come back and tell us. Because uh, that's the only way we know. GitHub stars, they're cool. But nobody knows who's really doing anything. You could hit GitHub star on something that you're never going to look at again. When you come back to us and you say, hey, do you want to see or beta test our app? Or like, uh, we, I, it was perfect timing. He sent me this message on our Slack chat. It says, thank you for Ignite and make it such an awesome CLI. Sent that the day before I left to come to this conference. And so I messaged him. I said, I'm putting you up as a slide. Is that OK? And he said, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, message us back. Show us what you've created. We were interested in seeing that. I uh, have to give some credit to a lot of people for this stuff. First off, the designers make it look not so terrible. You saw all those ugly reds and tildes. That's me. That's the stuff that I make. Those two top people are designers. They're fantastic. The two bottom ones are some of the most intelligent developers that I know, and we're constantly uh, working on Ignite. Uh, also, we get to curate the React Native newsletter. I don't know if you know that there is one. Uh, there's actually quite a few of them, but we have about we're coming up to 8,000 subscribers, so please subscribe to the React Native newsletter or React Native, uh, I think, CC. Uh, I'm also going to be speaking at Connect Tech. So if you're coming across the pond and you're, gonna go, uh, and you're going to Atlanta, come see me there. I have to thank these guys for constantly sending me to places and paying for open source. It's kind of crazy in a lot of regards, but each of these people are the founders of Infinite Red, and they've paid for us to build some of these things open source and they constantly work towards that initiative because that's how we all met each other. So ideally, I have to say great thanks to them. Uh, React Native EU, of course. So thank you to all of you. That's fantastic. I love it. And uh, also, those of you who have contributed uh, with over 6,000 stars on Ignite as it is right now, we have quite a few people. It's not just us. That's what I want to show. It's, like, it's not something where we want to limit you down to what it is that you can or can't deliver. 
And with that, thank you all very much.